the Madman. Welcome to the review of the most recently revealed cards from Voyage to the Sunken City, and we start with none other than the Queen herself, Queen Ashara. Five mana, five, five, Naga, Ballard Cry. If you've cast three spells while holding this, choose an ancient relic. A one mana, like, copy of your super insane spell. Uh, and since you're running Naga, you're going to have at least one spell that you're going to want to cast on the cheap. Great choice if you've got an expensive spell coming up that you want to double cast. If your opponent's low, you got Zalatath. Two mana, zero five weapon. After you cast a spell, deal two damage to the enemy hero and lose one durability. So two mana to deal ten damage over time. If you just ge want a generally good choice, there's Horn of Ancients. Three mana at a random colossal minion. To your hand, it costs one. After you play a Queen Ashara, uh, four mana to essentially play a random colossal minion. And then you've got a Tidestone of Golganess. Uh, it's another generally strong choice, similar to Horn of Ancients. One mana, shuffle five random spells into your deck, set their cost to one, draw two cards. That's, I guess, if you think that the board control of the Colossal won't help and you need to draw through your deck really fast for something. So yeah, all those choices look good and there's going to be situations where it's right for some over the other. Some deck archetypes will want uh, Ring of Tides more often because they're running big spells. Maybe the more offensive decks will want Zalatath more often. And then the other two are just generally good. Yeah, Queen Ashara. You're gonna want to put her into decks with spells. That is a Heist Baron Togwoggle power level type of card. For neutral, Demon Hunter gets Lady Den no. 3 mana 2 4 Naga, immune while attacking. After you cast a spell, attack the lowest health enemy. The Fell Demon Hunter deck has a bunch of spells in it. Maybe you can fit a Naga package into it? Yeah, it looks pretty efficient. If you're casting a bunch of small spells, uh, Lady Steno will basically have Battlecry deal 6 damage. Could be like split up. Cast a bunch of spells, deal 2 damage each time. Lowest health enemy could be your opponent after you've cleared the board could be like every time you deal a, cast a spell, deal two damage to the enemy opponent. That looks pretty strong. Rogue gets a card that makes them want to play pirates. Pirate Admiral Hook Tusk. Eight mana, eight, eight pirate. Battle cry if you've summoned eight other pirates this game. Plunder the enemy. She gives you a choice to either take their gold, take two cards from the opponent's hand, massive disruption, take their ship, take control of opponent's highest attack minion, basically a mind control, and take their supplies. Take five cards from your opponent's deck. If you think it's going to go to fatigue, I guess. Which, if you're running a hook tusk, maybe it will, because that looks like a value card. Which means Pirate Rogue is going to be the value rogue deck. Will a value deck work? Well, we gotta see all the pirates. We'll see if Rogue has survivability, card draw. Is Reno Jackson going to appear in the core set? All those questions might actually answer whether or not a value rogue could fit. I've actually played a Highlander value rogue before with Reno, and this particular incarnation could be pretty cool. Now that's super speculation that Reno Jackson in particular will make it into the core set, but hey, he's like the master of value right there. And barbed nets for a hunter. One mana, deal two damage to an enemy. If you played a Nagar while holding this, choose a second target. This could just be the replacement for Arcane Shot. In fact, seeing Barb Nets makes me think that Arcane Shot will probably not be in the core set, will probably rotate out. This is just a better Arcane Shot. Even if you're not playing with Naga, this card could fit into your Face Hunter deck, your Quest Hunter deck, certainly, even if you're not playing Naga. If you are playing Naga, well, you know, bonus. It's a cleave. And the technology is there now. You can actually select your two targets. So targeted cleave for uh, one mana. Sweet. And it could deal two damage to the face and then two damage to a minion. Paladin's got a new exciting direction revealed for it. And no, it's not the holy thing. It's the mech thing. What do I scan here? A radar detector, two mana. Scan the bottom five cards of your deck. Draw any mechs found this way, then shuffle your deck. This is the type of card that's extremely hard to review without seeing the entire set, because the last year, 
there's been one mech that fits into this deck that's been released, and Popsicle will probably fit into this mech deck so far. I mean, there's not very many choices you can do. Uh, but Radar Detector is like a very strong reason why you'd want to build a mech deck. Uh, if you have two thirds of your deck as mech, so like 20 out of 30 cards, then two thirds of five is three. That's two mana draw three, wow. Uh, if you've got cards that move mechs onto the bottom of your deck, Radar Detector is even more consistent in getting those mechs. So this is the build around card. Only question is, will there be the cards to build this around? Uh, but looks like Mech Paladin is on the table. And hey look, it's the Colossal for Paladin. And it's a good one, and it's a mech. Seven mana, the Leviathan, four five. Colossal plus one, Rush Divine Shield after this attacks Dredge. Uh, comes with the Leviathan's Claw with Rush and Divine Shield after this attacks draw a card. Eight seven worth of stats for seven. And they come in and deal 4 damage to 2 things, or 8 damage to 1 thing, and you draw a card. This card is tempo, value, efficient, it's all the things that a mid-range deck loves to see at their high end, and gives you a little bit more fuel while developing a dangerous board while clearing your opponent's stuff. You know, I'm a big mid-range paladin fan, it was the deck that I climbed the most with back in the day. It rank one legend with it at one point. What can I say? Put the Leviathan into your Paladin deck. It's got it all. It's even a mech if you decide you need some mechs in your mech deck, if you need more mechs. But kind of like most of the Colossal cards, these cards seem like really good toppers for any tempo deck, mid-range deck, value deck, for some, some control decks. Uh, this is certainly a decent control paladin card as well. It even interacts with uh, putting good cards onto the bottom of your deck. And even if you don't put in good cards on the bottom of your deck, Dredge will make sure that when you draw a card, you're going to draw one of the better cards in your deck, since you got to choose from three. Shaman's got Radiance of Ashara, uh, efficient 3 mana 3-4 three, elemental, with a whole host of abilities. Fire spell damage plus two, your nature spells cost one less, after you cast a frost spell, gain three armor. How much more blatant can it be made that shamans want to cast different schools of spells? Well, now you got Reigns of Ashara as an interesting way to do that as well. I mean, spell damage plus two on a three mana three four is strong. Your spells cost one less is strong on a three mana three four. After you cast a frost spell, gain three armor. I mean, that's strong too. Should you have frost spells, which of course you're a shaman, the last expansion was all about frost shaman. Yeah, that might work. Yeah, good pick for the multicaster deck. And, you know, as usual, that intersects with Naga, this intersects with Elemental, so many intersections of packages you could do. We got Lady Ashvane, 5 mana 5-5, five, five. battle cry, give all weapons in your hand, deck, and battlefield, plus one, plus one. I know there's an audience out there which loves a certain card, Hobart Grapple Hammer. And Lady Ashvane blows Hobart Grapple Hammer out of the water. Instead of just your hand and deck, this uh, grants your hand, deck, and battlefield, the weapon you already have equipped, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, instead of just plus one, plus zero. Uh, so that's a big upgrade. In fact, this is the card upgrade on all of the weapons in your deck and the one you're currently wielding and the ones in your hand. If you're running decks with weapons in them, strong consideration. Might actually be too slow though because you kind of wanted upgrade because it was one mana and cheap. Uh, this gets you your free upgrade but it's a little bit late. Uh, depends on how good the weapons are really. Uh, quite a few of the good ones are rotating. So, meh. That neutral Queen Ashara card, expect to See it across a lot of different decks. Definitely pushing the Naga theme quite a lot in this expansion. So I can see the tilt towards mid-range and spells and minions. And good old fashioned Hearthstone where you fight for the board over a period of time, perhaps. The Leviathan is one great example of that. Cheers to the rebirth of mid-range decks across all archetypes? We'll see.